Hi guys, and welcome to the CPC Podcast Extra with me, your host, Alfonso Greenbrook. Today in this Extra Pod, I'll be looking over the international break and all the Palace players who have represented their countries. As well as that, I'll be discussing players like Dan and Zaha and whether they should be included in the England squad. So let's begin. Nine Crystal Palace players have been called up for their countries in the last international break. A number of these faced crucial qualifiers in the race to reach the 2018 World Cup Finals in Russia, with Mile Jadonak kicking things off for Australia last Thursday, in a game which saw him equal Aki Rikilar's Palace record of 36 caps won whilst in SE25. The scholars could seal a point in the next phrase of Qualifying, something Chongong Lee's South Korea have already done as they look to maintain their 100% start of qualifying against Lebanon. In Africa, Yannick Balassi will be hoping to get DR Congo's campaign back on track when they face group leaders Agolon in a double header while Papa Soare could help seal Senegal or help Senegal reach the next phase if they can claim two wins against Niger. Adrian Mariapas. Jamaica face a tricky pair of games against Costa Rica in the Conafalac region ahead of a busy summer of reggae boys who are set to play in the Central Copa America in the USA in June. There's no, no such pressure in Europe with just friendly scheduled ahead of Euro 2016 but Johan Kabay will be aiming or has aimed to nail down a spot in Les Blues squad with some good performances against the Netherlands and Russia. Wales, meanwhile, took on Northern Ireland and Ukraine, with Joe Ledley, Wayne Hennessy and Jolly Williams all included in the squad. There are also some notable absences, with Emmanuel Adebayor, who pulled out of Tongo squad, uh, which we're going to take on, Tunisia to focus on his club form, and Bakri Sako is also missing Malai's, Malai's upcoming fixtures 
to focus on regaining his full fitness. So now I'm going to explain or read to you some of the reports uh, about some of the games. Mile Jednak became the joint most capped international player in Crystal Palace history when he captained Australia in the World Cup qualifier against Tekistan in Adelaide on Thursday morning UK time. The central midfielder's 36th appearance for Australia since joining the Eagles drew him level with, fin with the Finnish international Aki Relikai, I can never pronounce that, sorry, um, who represents the fin Finns 36 times during his five years in SE25. Jednak marked the occasion with an Im impressive fashion by scoring from the spot on 12 minutes to double the home side's lead, which had been established two minutes into the game by the Queen's Park Rangers' Masai Longo. Jednak's goal was his 10th for Australia since joining Palace in 2011. He has 12 in total for his country, which is also a club record, though he has already broken that one when he grabbed his 8th and ninth strikes against Turagistan and Bangladesh in November 2015. At half-time, with Australia comfortably leading 2-0, the Eagles midfielder was withdrawn. Mark Mulligan added a third from the spot after the restart, then braces from Nathan Burns and Tom Ruggett followed as Australia ran right and cruised to a 7-0 victory to remain the top of their group. Now to move on to Chung Yong Lee. So Chung Yong Lee played the full 90 minutes of South Korea's 1-0 home win over Lebanon in their campaign to qualify for the 2018 World Cup. The Eagles winger played the entire game at the Asa WA Stadium as his country ground a hard-fought 1-0 win courtesy of a late goal from substitute Lee Jokotom. The victory put the Red Devils further ahead at the top of Group G, 11 points clear of second place Kwati, who had a game in hand. South Korea's game against Kwati, which is due to take place on March the 29th, has been suspended however. And obviously I would have given you the match report of that, but obviously as it's been uh, suspended, I cannot do that. Now to move on to the main article which has the majority of the uh, reports in it. So let's move on to that one. So following the details of Mili Yednak and Chong Long Lee's opening games of the international break, I'm now going to give you uh, some of the other news and articles from other Crystal Palace players who have represented their country over this Easter holidays. So Wayne Hennessy and Joe Ledley started while... Johnny Williams came off the bench as it finished all square on first, last Thursday evening in Wales against Northern Ireland. A late penalty from the home side denied the visitors a victory as Simon Church converted the spot after Garrett Mullally had been fouled. There was in response to an effort from Craig Carvey that had given Northern Ireland an advantage in the game. Ledley felt that the match had provided a useful game as the squad to build up to Euro 2016. He said, these friendlies are good to show what f formations we can go into the Euros. We can mix it up and I think that, that will give us an advantage. I thought we were fantastic against Northern Ireland. We treated it like a competitive game and not just a friendly. We stuck in, got a draw and on a different day we would have won. Johan Kabay was an unused substitute as France made the journey to the Netherlands and the home side came back from 2-0 down at half time to level only for the French to get a late winner. The friendly on Friday evening was, a, was stopped after 14 minutes to applaud to remember Dutch legend Johan Cruyff, who, has part, who passed away last Thursday. A minute's silence had also been planned, but the remembrance turned into a standing ovation at, at the Amsterdam Arena. Balassi Matuidi scored a late winner for the French side on an emotional night. Also on Friday, Adrian Mariapa took his place in the Jamaican side that drew 1-1 against Costa Rica, the leaders of Group B, in a Con CONACAF 2018 World Cup qualifying group. Johnny Ascosta's 68th minute equaliser put the scores back on level terms after Joanna Watson had given Jamaica a 16 minute lead, but in the end they had to set a four point against the group leaders. On to Saturday 
and Yannick Balassi was in his international squad hoping to get DR Congo's campaign back on track against group leaders Anagon. A 2-1 victory in Kalashiskan, courtesy of goals from Vila striker Cedric Bakamu and Eli Meshukwa, saw him do just that as his sides went top of the group. And once again, I do apologise for the pronunciation of these names. Now, see, some of the African names are slightly harder to pronounce. So if I do get them wrong, I'm sorry, but just read the article if you want to get the correct names. But um, Papa Suare travelled out of his country for two games this week. The first seeing Senegalese, the Senegalese team extending their lead in Group K of the 2017 African Cup of Nations qualifiers. Goals from Mohamed Dehaim and Bayer Obsom Nassi sealing a 2-0 victory over Niger in Dakar on Saturday. This third consecutive win sees them move six points clear at the top of their table halfway through the qualifying campaign with a chance to seal their place for Gabon 2017 when they play again on Tuesday. And obviously, I'm reading this in the past, but actually I'll go on to explain the result of that game. And something interesting happened in that game uh, involving Papa Suarez, so I'll go on to talk about that. So now to move on to the final game of this section of the report. So uh, Chung Ung Lee wasn't involved as South Korea played their second game of the week and beat Thailand 1-0, a match that saw his side set a new record for keeping clean sheets. Sung Hing Kong got the winning goal, but the Plondits were to the defence as they kept an eighth clean sheet in succession, beating a previous record held in the late 80s. So obviously now um, there's a few more res uh, a few more reports I'm going to go on to talk about, uh, but there is a few of them which don't have reports yet, and I don't know the, re just the results of them yet. But the Ukraine versus Wales one, I'll go on to talk about that result. That was on Monday night. The game on Tuesday night, Australia versus Jordan. Obviously, J Jednak being involved with that. I'll go on. There's no report for that. I'm not sure of the score, but uh, as soon as I get it, I'll post it on Twitter which is at the CPC podcast, and you can check out the result there. Now, Niger against Senegal, obviously Suarez being involved. I do have a report for that, and obviously that is an interesting game. Something important, like I've said, or significant, happened with Papa Suarez. Now, Balassi's game and Glora versus DR Congo. See Balassi being involved with that. That was on Tuesday night, but there's no report uh, yet of that. And the same for the France versus Russia game. There's no report on that. As of yet, I could check the scores up, but there's no report. So when the report comes out, I will update you on Twitter once again. Obviously, Wednesday, Costa Rica versus Jamaica. Obviously, Mariapa being involved there. There's no report on that yet, but I believe um, that Jamaica got a good result. Mariapa played quite well, but there's no report on that. So I won't give you details on that. So once again, if you want to see updated details, up to date, about these following result of these following games that I, I'm not going to re give reports over, then happily go over to my Twitter um, and also my Instagram and you can find out um, or read about the results there. But now I'm going to move on to the Wales, the Wales game, obviously where three Palace players were involved. And actually, just looking at it, I've totally forgot Jednak's game is on here. So I'll, I'll talk about the Wales game and then also talk about Jednak's game. And then the m most important, Jednak's game. So Wales suffered defeat away to Ukraine last Monday as they, pre as they prepare for Euro 2016. Andrei Yolomuk scored the only goal of the game inside the first half an hour, capitalising on some nervy defender by Chris Coleman's side. The ex-Eagles man made six changes to the side that drew 1-1 with Northern Ireland on the... Thursday before that night, with Wayne Hennessy and Jolly Williams among the 11 that started. Joe Ledley played the final 11 minutes in Kiev, but was unable to get his team back into the tie. Elsewhere, Mile Yednak's Australia took on Harry Redknapp's and Jordan took on, sorry, yeah, took on Harry Redknapp and Jordan on Tuesday morning. Though the Eagle skipper was an unused substitute for the 5-1 win in Sydney. So obviously Australia doing very well. Obviously Mila Yelek was injured. And now we know that. And he might miss the game against West Ham. 
but we'll have to wait and see to get updates on his injury. So Jednak is tied with Aki Riliakis as Palace's most capped international player on 36 appearances, but he will now have to wait even longer or wait till the end of the season when Australia face England at the Stadium of Light on May the 27th for a chance to break that record. So hopefully Jednak can break his record and become Crystal Palace's most capped player. So uh, give him the best of luck and hopefully he recovers from his injury. So now for the big report which I'm going to give you, which is a report about Senegal's game where Papa Soiree was involved. So drum roll please. Papa Soiree scored a fantastic free kick as Senegal edged closer to the African Cup of Nations 2017 qualification with a 2 1 win over Niger in Namali last night. And obviously, that was the amazing news. Papa Soiree scored an absolute fantastic free kick. And I will put a link in the description below to a tweet which I sent out which has a video of that free kick. But truly, that was worth the drum roll. That was an absolutely fantastic strike from Papa Suare and hopefully he can do more like that for Palace. So the Palace left back curved the, curved the set piece over the Nigerian's wall just before half time to double the lead established by Musa Kante from the from a penalty which had been won by the Southampton forward Sergio Man Man Mane. Niger responded in the second period and Victor Adebayor mani managed to half the deficit with a spot kick of his own but it wasn't enough to earn the home side anything from the game. Senegal have now won the first four of their six qualification group games meaning that they are almost guaranteed a place at the African Cup of Nations 2017 which will take place in Gabonon in the next next year. And obviously I did say that there was no reports regarding the Yannick Balassi's game for Congo and Manuel Adebayor's game against Togo and also Johan Kabai's game but actually I totally forgot that actually they are still they are on the same article as Papa Suarez one. So uh, a little bonus there, we can talk about these games. So Yannick Balassi and Congo also enjoyed success in their quest for the African Cup of Nation qualification. The Leopards beat Angol 2-0 two, two in Lauda, having already recorded a 2-1 victory over them in Kashana three days earlier. DR Congo are now top of Group B on nine points after four games, and at this rare and at this rare, they are looking likely to secure a place at next year's tournament. Elsewhere, Emmanuel Adebayor and Togo were held to a drawless draw against Tunisia, who had beaten the Sparrowhawks one 0 in the strikers' absence last week. The defeat leaves Togo third in Group A, level on points with Tunisia, but two adrift of Liberia at the top. Johan Kabai was an unused substitute during France's 2-4-2 uh, humbling of Russia at the Stade de France. Premier League players Yo Co uh, sorry, Nolo Kante of Leicester and West Ham's Dimitri Pyatt were on the score sheet, um, along with Andro Pyre Gunnick and Kinsley Coman, as West Blues improved, impressed ahead of hosting Euro 2016 this summer. So there, now you've heard the match reports, now for some discussion about some of the players who I think should be in the England squad. Dan and Zaha, you would have probably guessed. So like I've said in the introduction you've just heard about 30 seconds ago, I'm going to discuss the England players, players who I think in the Palace squad are good enough to play for England but haven't yet been selected. And obviously I say haven't yet been selected, one of the players, I might as well tell you now, Zaha has already had, I believe it's two caps for England so he's had the experience but I think now is a chance for him and Scott Dan 
to break into the England squad. So let's just start off with Dan. And I would explain some of the other players who I think should be in their international squads. But I'm not really going to discuss other, other teams, other countries, because I'm English. So I'm going to discuss which players I think will be most suited to joining the England squad. So start with Scott Dan. I think that he is, he's, for example, I think he's a very similar player to Cahill, for example, who plays for Chelsea. I think he's got the same sort of attributes. And the only advantage over Cahill is that Dan is slightly younger. And obviously, Cahill, he's still very good at his age. And it's the same with Dan. I think Dan, when he gets to sort of Delaney's age, 34, he will still play really well. But for Cahill, I think that Dan, will, if he does ever get picked for England, he'll probably be the replacement for Cahill. Because although Dan is... I, think, I believe he's 28 or 29, but although he's quite old, but he's still in, but he's quite old, but he's still in his prime of his game. So if Cahill decides to retire in the next, say, three, four years, I suppose Dan would be a good person to come in instead as he's quite old, but he's got the experience there you would need. And as long as he keeps fit and carries on what he's doing with Palace at the minute, I'm sure that he will break into the squad. And I think that would probably be the best opportunity for him is actually to come in instead of Cahill. And sort of another reason, I suppose, is players like Smalling and Stones obviously are very good players. Don't get me wrong, very good English players um, and deserve to be in the English squad. But I think that if Dan come in, it'll be a slightly, there'll be slightly more experience in that line because obviously Smalling and Stones are quite young players. So if you bring in someone like Dan and put him with Cahill, that adds a bit more experience to the back line and that would actually benefit them play them two players for example as they be able to improve and get better so really they're the sort of two main reasons i think dan loves to be in the england squad obviously he's not a biased opinion i think he's got the quality to go into the england squad like i've said there he's got the experience you need he's at a sort of his prime of his game so i think now for the euros would be the perfect time for dan to get into the squad and that just leads me nicely on to talk about zaha who's already had a cap for England, or two caps, like I've said, I'm not sure. I'll check that out, uh, or you can check it out. But he's had, I think that he's, like I've said, he's had the experience before. He knows what you've got to do for England. And I think out of Dan and Zaha, at the moment, based on their performances, Zaha has the better chance to get into the squad for Euro 2016. And obviously, I think that if they brought in Zaha, someone like Zaha, it would offer something more out wide for the England squad, because they've got some pretty good wide players but what a uh, Hodson is doing is he's playing instead of playing like the likes of Sterling who can play out wide he's playing Danny Welbeck he's playing Jamie Vart he's playing players like that out wide when actually it doesn't really work like that whereas if you brought in Zaha maybe he Zaha could go on one side and Sterling could go on the other one it would offer a lot more width rather than playing narrow which I find that England do quite a lot. So bringing in Zaha would offer a sort of new game plan and give other players like Sterling a go, who actually in sort of Hodgson's recent games, he hasn't really played Sterling. So maybe if Zaha came in, them two could make a good partnership out wide and make a good impact. And also I think that, in my opinion, I think that a player like Oxley chamberlain I think Zaha and Oxley chamberlain could sort of change around. I think that... Maybe Zaha should be given a chance instead of him and then see if Zaha is good enough to replace him. And then maybe if Zaha isn't as good to that, maybe Chamberlain should come back. But I think that that would be probably the one player who would probably be the best swap, let's say, or the best player instead of Zaha, I think, just to change it around. And in my opinion, it will probably be a better choice. But that's only because I've seen more of Zaha than I have of Oxley chamberlain But maybe... You know, give Zaha a chance first instead of him. And if Zaha isn't up to it, then fair enough. He's had his chance. And obviously give Oxley chamberlain the chance again. And also, he's younger than the sort of like Fia Walcott, for example. And there's been calls actually for Fia Walcott to call it a day and, you know, to either move a, to a different team so he gets more game time or just to sort of step down from England. And I think that obviously where Zaha's a lot, long, a yacht, uh, sorry, a lot younger than Fia Walcott, I think that actually... It would be a good choice to move to get Zaha in the squad because in that way he's got, you know, Hodgson's got sort of another another way of playing. And I think that definitely if they brought in Zaha, they'd be able to play out wide more instead of playing narrow 
and actually it would be a different gameplay and maybe help us to win the Euros. I'm not saying that because it's unbiased, but I think I think that that's what England need. They need, obviously, they they're very good at playing narrow play, but maybe because teams are used to it now, we should adapt back again and play wide play because then maybe that will give us the best opportunity to win games and attack because we've got some good outfield players. So rather than playing play, play people like Sturridge and Vardy out wide, maybe play Kane and Vardy up front and have Sterling and Zaha on the wings. So may, maybe that will work, but we'll just have to wait and see. And also I have to talk about some other players, uh, Joe Ward, Jason Punchin, Connor Wickham, Martin Kelly, just a few of the name of Palace players in the squad who are Palace players in the squad, no English Palace players who I think that they're good English players, good quality, but at the moment I don't think they're up to the England standard as much as Dan and Zahara, but I'm sure that obviously the likes of Wickham and Ward, they're still quite young, they're in the prime of their game, obviously they can improve and obviously get into the England squad once players like Cahill maybe retire and John Terry retire and then that way we could have a more younger squad but I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of potential there for good England players and you know hopefully we could uh, improve the English squad and players like I've said Zaha's had a cap but so has Martin Kelly Martin Kelly a very good option maybe at right back so we'll just have to wait and see and obviously maybe there's been talk of Kelly playing as a centre-back so maybe when he plays as a centre-back we might actually find that he's a better centre-back than he is a right-back and then maybe he'll have a chance to get into the England squad. But they're the sort of players who I think that are good English players in the Palace squad. Not good enough to play for the international team yet, but uh, definitely got what it takes if they were given the opportunity. Uh, other English players like Jordan March, I don't think, would get into the England squad. But you never know, Jamie Vardy, look where he came, non-league to playing international. Who knows? But, you know... Jordan much he's got a long way to improve just like the other players Ward, Punch and Wickham, Kelly but same improvement Dan and Zaha have to improve as well to get into the English squad to make sure they're at the standard but really I think that both Dan and Zaha have got what it takes they've got experience they've got you know they've got the ability that you would want of an English player and I think in my opinion not as a bias but as an English person I think that they are what we need we need some different sense of attacking a different type of play, a different type of tactic let's say when we're playing our games uh in euro 2016 and i think that zaha and dan would be the perfect people to provide us with that so now you've heard the reports and my own opinion that concludes my extra podcast about the international break and the palace players involved involved in it but make sure to come back next week for my post-match review of west ham versus crystal palace in the league so for, thanks for watching and remember to up the palace. Vote for your player of the month using the link in the description below.